Let's get to what we were discussing yesterday. We posted it on Instagram. We wanted to get a feel for it. Modern day posing, modern day bodybuilder posing. And Lee, you brought up a good point as far as the posing versus the entertainment aspect of it. Reflect back on your memories of Melvin and what made him such a great poser in your mind. Oh, Melvin was just a great poser. Just just looking at Melvin, you know, some people, I don't know, some people's like dancing, I guess. Us white people, we suck at dancing, so <laughs> we don't have rhythm. And I think the same comes to posing. You can just see people who are naturally gifted when it comes to posing. They can hear music, they can flow, their body moves to it. He said, not even the muscles, like Melvin said, even facial expressions or even the opening of a hand or a hand closing your fingers. Everything comes into play when someone's a great classical poser. So just seeing Melvin move on stage was just like watching fluid. It's just like this fluid movement, the music, and it just gracefully went together. Whereas you get other guys that come out and just do the most muscular walk to the stage, most muscular walk over there. They'll have some music where every second beat is boom, boom, so they can't miss the pose. But <laughs> you can watch Melvin pose, and sometimes I know people will be like, oh, they're not clapping. That's, that, to me, that's great. If you can mesmerize an audience, yeah, we'd love to hear the applause and that, but if you can walk out and pose, and there is silence because the crowd is just in awe. Because Melvin, you know, it's times I've started off slow and the crowd would be quiet and people think, well, no one's making a noise because they're so captivated by his moving and his posing. And then he'd go into some robot and dance moves and then the crowd would really arc up and stuff. But if you can just catch someone with music and posing like that, you've got him in the palm of your hand. And Melvin always did that when he was posing. There's very, you know, there's a lot of good poses, but to be an exceptional poser like Melvin, there's probably only a handful to this day in bodybuilding that, that can do that. Yes, there are entertainers too, like Kai and that, who can stand on his head and do, do the splits and spin around and stuff. But yes, that's sort of good posing. But to me, that's more on the entertaining side, whereas Melvin had best of both worlds. But when Melvin posed, he really posed. Let's get King Kamali in here. King, we're going to talk about individual bodybuilders uh, today as far as who uh, are considered to be some of the better poses, uh, better posers. In your opinion, though, again, we talk about Melvin Anthony, we talk about a generation of great on-stage entertainers. Do you feel as if we still have that same level of quality today in terms of posing, in terms of routine as we do today? Uh, and if you want to throw in, in your memories, what made Melvin such a great on-stage entertainer? Yeah, absolutely not. It's horrible nowadays. It sucks. Bodybuilding is not bodybuilding anymore. I've said it a thousand times. People seem to think that when we say things like this, we are disgruntled and, oh, they're retired. And no, it's not. Bodybuilding is not the same. You know, the energy is gone. The excitement's gone. The guest posing is gone. When you had a guest poser come into town, it was like a rock star coming into town. You go there. People will go nuts. You see, you feel the energy even before you walk out on stage. The lights come on. You hear the oohs and ahs. Now you got crickets. Rami walks out at 320 pounds and you hear crickets. What's wrong with that? <laughs> What is wrong with that? You know what's wrong with that? It's the internet. Internet fucked everything up. Social media fucked everything up. Right now, when you have social media stars that are bigger than the actual stars, something's wrong with this picture, right? Oh. Something's really wrong with this picture. As far as Melvin goes, listen, my, me personally, I always, uh, I loved going up against Melvin because Melvin was, he was fun, okay? <laughs> Craig took it personal. Melvin didn't take it personal. Melvin took it like exactly what he just did right now. You got, you know, he, you say something to him and he comes right back at you and it was fun. Melvin's the type of person that you could have a fight with. And then later on that day at the expo, he'll buy you lunch. That was Melvin. Now, mm -hmm. as far as his posing goes, Melvin is a pop locker from the West coast. All right. One of the funniest <laughs> things I've no. ever seen is when he had a break that when he had a uh, pop lock competition in Italy against a it bunch of fucking douchebags, I, I, every time I'm in a bad mood, I watch that video and I laugh my ass off because Melvin doesn't care. He'll do it any place, anytime, anywhere. Characters, personalities, that shit was, is gone. Dexter retired. The last of the Mohicans retired. It's done. It's a whole different ballgame now. I'm sorry, Milos. I know you got a lot of people you're coaching. I know that you, you got a lot of people under you and all these people, but it's not the same. And I know deep down in your heart, you know that's true. Well, I do want to get Milo Shim because I know, Milos, you have to run in a short period of time, and I appreciate your time as always. I know you have to go train. I wanted to get your opinion if you want to respond to King, but then also in today's bodybuilding landscape, who you like, who reminds you sort of that, you know, Melvin's era as far as posing, as far as that onstage entertainment value. 
Okay, let me make uh, one thing straight. I, I don't have to go three o'clock to train because oh, okay. it's three o'clock uh, Western <laughs> time, not Eastern time. Oh, so you're good. <laughs> oh, good. And by the way, when I when I say this West East, I want to revisit that uh, East West uh, competition also because uh, I have a couple of uh, uh, Westerns here and a couple of Easterns, and then uh, an Australian guy that can say who is better, East Coast or West Coast. But uh, here, uh, about the posing. Melvin uh, brought it really this uh, to the next level. He got everything from John, as uh, Lee Priest said, uh, opening the finger, uh, facial expression, angles, uh, bending, uh, the, the, the choices of the poses. You know, you can, you can hit the 10 great poses, but these 10 great poses have to be uh, hit in the uh, right transitions and in order. If you do from one and then the other one doesn't make sense, you know, it ruins the posing. So Melvin, I mean, uh, that 2003 posing routine from Adam and I posted, I, I think that was, that's a masterpiece. 2001. Now, 2001. Yeah, that, that, that was a really masterpiece. And I, I'm going to, you know, King, you're here. I, I do remember once commentating uh, Mr. Olympia, and I actually... Uh, was, uh, was kind of bashing you uh, for your great entertaining posing. And I was saying like, look, he didn't hit the uh, three poses in all this uh, dance, you know? So uh, I, I'm gonna take that back because yeah, you did, uh, I've seen many of your routines. You did so entertaining and you did excellent routine. But if I'm a judge going by the 80s and the 90s rules, when we had a symmetry round, a scholarly round and a posing round, presentation round, was counted for. You can actually get the points on that. Uh, Melvin, you beat uh, uh, Flex Wheeler 2003 in Ironman after the posing round. He was ahead of you in the pre-judging, right? So if you take this as an element, hey, we don't have a much of the sporting event in a, in a bodybuilding, you know, because they, they say it's not sport, it's entertainment. Uh, well, it was a sport, a sport back in the day. You do the symmetry round and you have a 20 comparisons. Three guys back to back to back, you can dissect them. Now there is the six guys. How in the hell are you going to look at the guy from the left, guy to the right, and then in the middle? There is no way. Uh, so when we came to the posing, there was the posing of John Brown, Mohamed Maccabi, Lila Brada, uh, Ed Corny, Vince Taylor. I mean, uh, that was art. And this is what uh, uh, Madden brought into it. With his touch of entertainment, which you, Kamari, yeah, you, you did the hell of a job there. You know, as much as I uh, made those comments back then for the Mr. Olympia, I was actually commentating. And I, and I, uh, I said, like, well, this is, uh, this is entertainment, but not the posing routine. I've seen some of your posing routines, and you did manage to keep your stomach tight and, uh, and, and make interesting poses. I've seen several of those dancers that they tried to emulate uh, uh, Denim Charles or uh, Melvin Anthony. And they completely lose. The stomach goes out. You know, they, they, they do some poses that don't do nothing for their physique. It's, it's, it's just the opposite. I remember back in the day when I was in the 90s posing uh, in Germany. And this uh, German promoter goes, Milos, why the hell do you do back double biceps pose in your free posing routine? I said, what do you mean? You know, it's, it's a mandatory pose. Yes, but not in a free posing. Free posing is supposed to be uh, a time that you emphasize your physique your strengths, not your weaknesses. So you have no arms, you have no back. Why the hell are you doing a bad old bicep? I said, like, yeah, you're right. You know, so that also comes at the art of posing. Some guys don't have all the mandatories perfectly, but then when they bring this uh, uh, twisting back shots, lunging, kneeling, whatever, and you go, whoa, look at that, whoa. I mean, the whole Melvin's routine 2003, I swear to God, I saw it a thousand times. I was like, this is absolute perfection, okay? So, you know, just, just to mention this, uh, Sean Ray was a great poser. So nobody can take away this from him, right? right. Uh, Melvin, you, you told me in a, in a conversation yesterday, you don't take away from Sean as a bodybuilder. You even think that he should win Mr. Olympia. So let's, uh, I mean, I, I know that a lot of guys jump on Sean. Sean is Sean, okay? You, you say he is kind of selfish, things just of himself. I and as, I, as I told you, right? Uh, everybody <laughs> should be... <laughs> what? He's very <laughs> selfish, man. Come on, Milos. Yeah, yeah, but, but here, here, uh, a question for all of you guys. Should we all be selfish and think of ourselves first or follow my advice, uh, my, my way? 
I was putting myself last always and end up with the short end of the stick. So I, I understand that Sean wants to, you know, do things for Sean. Okay. But to be fair, I mean, he does give some advices. Uh, Madden, he was not your opposing coach by no means, absolutely. And uh, uh, you were not here. I don't know if you listen. I said that day, 2099 uh, for the, the uh, USA that you won. Uh, and then going to 2000, uh, Night of the Champions, which uh, I prepare you for. You know, mm -hmm. I was observing your posing, of course, with the due respect of John giving me instructions. I would just be second pair of the eyes. And in that moment, Sean was there and he just said his, his basic back double biceps open, hit it back again. I mean, something that you already did 2,000 times. So, you know, on that matter, he didn't teach you anything. But to conclude, and uh, um, I, I'm sure that all of you guys agree, I haven't seen one great posing routine on last year's Olympia, let me think. Not one. I mean, because it's a, it's a scale down. You don't need to do, you're not being judged on it. You know, it's just like a little impression. If you had a three round symmetry round, so you have to emphasize aesthetics, shape. We didn't need to go to the classic physique because if you want to be more classic, you would do it so you can win a symmetry round. Then you, you, you want to freak them out and you win the square round, okay? You still need to pose. You can yeah. do the most muscular and front of biceps you know, stick your tongue out and go left and right. Milos, can I say something here? Okay, Every, <laughs> everything you're saying, I 100%, 1,000% agree. The problem is, the, you have to look at the root of the problem, okay? One person was awarded a pro card at the USA's. One. That's it. One. That's it. Now That's it. you got 118 pro cards handed out. What, that's yep. what fucked up the sport. When you're coming and you're going into the Nationals of the USA, you had to be the best in the country, number one in the United States. Now you have to be number one to 200. You understand? That's yeah. why when you say water down, that's what the water down. They don't care anymore. That's the problem. When I'm getting ready for a show, when I was getting ready, and I knew Melvin was going to be in it, and I was like, I would go to Body Rock. I'm like, no, man, we got to outdo him. We got to outdo him. Whatever he's <laughs> doing, Steve, I don't care what he's doing. I wanted to put more sound effects, put more bombs here. I want more drops here, this and that. Now they don't care. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because the girl with the, has the fucking Dominican ass and the fucking bombshell boobs is getting, with one million followers on Instagram, she's getting paid. <laughs> not mm -hmm. the guy who's killing himself on stage. That's mm -hmm. the problem, man. One champion. Now there's 118 pro cards being handed out. Okay. Can I, can I ask you just, guys? Okay. Uh, King, how do you explain that right now we have a probably 300, 400 professionals? Right. Back in the day, I'm going to mention uh, Melvin's pro debut, 2000 uh, Night of the Champions, right? Uh, mm -hmm. 44 competitors. Mm-hmm. 40 fucking four competitors. I competed also 50 competitors on the fucking stage, not the champions. Now you have a show, like what was here in California, like eight competitors and uh, nine and 10. I don't get it. I was a pro. I have a pro card. I can enter any pro contest, make money, promote myself, you know, get some jobs. Where are those pros? We have, a, like you said, uh, 300 pros. Where are they? Why are they not competing? They don't I, care. Yeah, Milos, uh, but that, that's a topic that we've been talking about now over the course of the last two weeks, and that is, and that was sort of answered, you know, with this Arnold Classic lineup. Sergio Oliva Jr. came on Heavy Muscle Radio and and essentially called out the bodybuilding world. He wanted more co more competitors to compete, especially the high level ones, and that's what we're going to get uh, at the Arnold Classic. But uh, Dave, let me bring you in because again, you made you know a real uh, career out of guest posing um and you know again you have an appreciation for the art of guest posing you and i were talking about this over the phone yesterday again who brought up the point i i really wish i could remember it, but they pointed out on instagram how guest posing in a sense today has become two and a half minutes of just most muscular shots telling the crowd to get up and, yeah. and then that's about it uh in your opinion again because when we talk about today's bodybuilders Again, you have many who have an appreciation for the art of bodybuilding, for the art of posing. 
But in a sense that hasn't translated, where do you think the disconnect is? People are lazy. I mean, when I would do a, when I would go guest post, like I didn't have the talent of, of Melvin. So I had to be entertaining. I had the size and freakiness. And that's what the, I knew the crowd loves that in guest posers. And I always was in shape. So I made sure I was always in shape. And I would put together these routines. I would choreograph with music and props and everything like that to get people laughing, to get them like, holy mackerel, this is cool. I got my money's worth coming to the show because I got entertained by, by someone who actually took the time to be creative. Because when I went to bodybuilding shows, that's what I, you know, speaking of, uh, I remember seeing Melissa Coates guest pose at the um, Muscle Beach, one of the Muscle Beach shows back in the 90s. May she rest in peace. We lost her recently. Yeah, and she put on such a great routine. It was so entertaining. I said, you know what? When I get to the level, if I ever get to the level where people want to pay me or see me to guest pose, I am going to put time and effort into my routines. I'm not going to just go up there and wing it because these people are paying money to see these shows and they deserve to be entertained. And you know what? I might not be a pro. I might not be an Olympian, but I'm going to give them their money's worth. And they're going to remember Dave Palumbo when they leave that auditorium. And that's what I did every single time. And I did... A couple of years, I guess, post 35 times a year. I mean, so I was, you know, I was in demand. I, I didn't overcharge these promoters. I did seminars with it. I gave them their money's worth. And, and, and you know what? The people who went there and bought a ticket to see their friends felt like they got something a little extra. And I don't know why we don't have that today. The shows are too long. There's too many divisions. People just want to get out of there. They're not interested in watching anything. And I think that that's the problem, you know. So, you know, it, it, it's a different era. I understand that. Um, you mentioned Sergio Oliva Jr. I think he's a great poser. I love he's watching him on that. stage. He's entertaining. He does his own thing, but then he also throws in a little bit of his dad's poses at the end. I mean, it, the audience goes crazy for that. I mean, that that's entertainment. You know, we put out this post yesterday on our Instagram, and some of the names that are mentioned. Yeah, Sergio Oliva Jr. was one of the more prominent names mentioned. The most prominent one was Terrence Ruffin, and you had a lot of a handful. Yeah. Coming from the classic physique division, uh, Antoine Vaillant, Hunter Labrada uh, mentioned uh, prominently from the open class as well. Uh, Melvin, let's bring you back on this. When you lens, when you survey the landscape to today's bodybuilding, who do you like? Who do you find entertaining on stage? <laughs> entertaining? I, I think that you know the names that you mentioned. Uh, they are very good posers, uh, but there's a level. There's a level that the bodybuilding community or the the fitness community as a whole they don't try to grasp um the wow factor um terrence ruffin's a, I, I like him i like the way he poses um sergio oliva i've been knowing the guy since he was a kid there's a level there's a there's a there's a level that goes beyond what he's done um and that's why i started to try to teach it i started you know giving guys um information guys have been retaining my services to help them get there that's the same information that I got from John Brown. I could deliver it. You know what I mean? Paul Dillette was one of the guys I really, really wanted to like get a hold of when I was I was coming up through the ranks. You know what I mean? He used to stay at Lee Priest's house, you know? And I used to go over there like a little <laughs> kid. And I, you know, I used to talk to him, hey man, you know, there's a mind muscle connection that you're not trying to learn. But he thought, since I'm in shape, I'm 300 pounds, I don't care. So <laughs> if you don't care, that's how he talks. He has real bad asthma. So, you know, Melvin, I don't care. So you know, I'm 300 pounds in, huh, I don't care. Yeah, so, you know, I should just laugh at him. All right, well, don't care then. So you get what you get. So the same emphasis that these guys have now, oh, King, shit. Kamali, King Kamali says it best. You know, they, they laugh at me because I'm always a jokester. I'm going to tell it like it is. And I can emulate Paul Dillette like you would not believe. He'd be like, I'd be in the gym and i do the cartier. So huh, I don't care. I'll just do three hours and I will get up there and huh, I will just do an ab shot and let it be over with. Nah, man, because I didn't do, even to this day, if I competed now, let's just say you put me on stage right now, I'm in my best shape. I don't do it for the money. I do it for the people who paid to get here. The people who paid money to see me, I'm going to be the one that stands out. So I put the emphasis in and the time and the effort and the work to be able to have a wild factor. So, yes, Terrence Ruffin would be the standout guy. Um, Sergio Oliva Jr. is another standout guy for, for classical posing. But there's another level, the entertainment value. There's another level. You have to connect with the music. You have to bring the music. You have to make it come alive. And there's a system for that. Dave, one thing here. I think I mentioned this before that I, when I talked to you before. When I won the Nationals, Lee Haney was backstage. And I, what he told me changed my life. It really did. And what Lee said to me was, win the crowd. He goes, 
just just be entertaining. Win the crowd, and you're gonna have a great career. Forget about that play part. Just win the crowd. He that said part. that to me, and it just stuck to my head. I'm like, okay, uh, that's it. That's what I'm gonna do. And you don't know, Dave, how many times I'm not gonna mention names because then I'm gonna get shit for it. How many times some officials would tell me, stop doing that. Your routines are too long. Why are you dancing? And I would look at them and be like, but I got the best response. What are you talking about? You want me to stop when, I'm, when the crowd is having a good time? Mm -hmm. So I would be like, okay, sure, no problem. Then next time I'll do it even longer. So <laughs> you, you got to, Melvin's right, entertainment. You got to make them have, don't do, and I love the fact that people use songs that they like. No, 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 no. No, right, right. They right. like yeah. the audience. Do what everyone likes. So everyone's like, oh, yeah, I know that song. Exactly. Not what you I have like. Yeah, you have to send a message. And I, I will tell you, when we were coming through, like he said, the USA, the California, the, the Orange County, there was one guy. I had to beat everybody. You know what I'm talking about? And you didn't have to be the biggest. You just had to be the best. And we took it serious. Believe me, Milos is Jim. Milos will tell you. We didn't play on the West Side. We were street boys. So when Key Kamali came out in a magazine and he got to talk of that shit about we was pussies and the West Coast, those guys don't train hard. We wanted to kill Key Kamali. When Key Kamali came in 93, he didn't know. Everybody had the audience had guns. They's like, hey, yeah, ain't that that guy? So when we came out backstage, you remember we came out the backstage we, after the show and Key Kamali was like, hey, man, you know, I just want to say, man, that was all for show. That statement, he they was about to jump on King. <laughs> they, they had the green light to get his ass. Dave, and it was like I, at the two thousand one, at the two thousand one Iron Man, when I was up there battling, uh, there were people in the audience throwing they up were, gang signs. Throwing up gang signs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. yes, they wanted and then to kill JD, King. JD saw that, and he came back right after preaching. He goes, King. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to escort you to your car, Mr. Family, because I think you're going to get jumped. I'm like, yeah. no, I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Don't worry. Yeah, so King Kamali comes out the side entrance in 2001. <laughs> he comes out the side on the stage. You know, the guys, you know, I got my little friends. They from the, from the neighborhood. They were like, yeah, that's that fool. They throwing up gang signs. So they, they wanted to get King. So look, <laughs> so King come out on the side of the stage after the show. You know, we all, you know, it was all over with. It was all we came out. And King, you know, he put his hands out. He said, hey, Mel, man, that was a battle, man, for the ages, man. You know, it was all for show. And it hit me that this guy was just playing. But we didn't know that. He was in the gym talking about, Milos, when that dude come over here, we going to beat him up on stage and we going to get him after. <laughs> uh, 2001 Iron Man, Chris winning, Melvin second, and Kamali crazy looking uh, t third. Yes, I mean, it, it, it was a show. It was it a was battle. really uh, something spectacular. But uh, now when you're talking East Coast, West Coast, uh, I just touched the subject. Uh, let me ask you guys, because I'm not, uh, you know, American, so I couldn't enter USA as a nationals. Uh, what do you guys, okay, Dave, you did almost 20 uh, national levels from yeah. North American USA's yeah. uh, the nationals, you did everything. Yeah, Melvin, you only did the USA's, uh, Dave did both every year USA nationals, USA nationals, and he came all the, you know, all the way up to the second. Uh, uh, King, you only did the nationals, why is that? Oh, I'm going to tell you. Oh, okay, I'll let King Kamali answer that first, and then I'll, I'll come in. I'll, I'll tell my yeah. It was obvious to me. It was As a kid coming up, it was so fucking obvious that the USA's was a West Coast show, West Coast judges, West Coast everything. Why would I go there and get my ass handed to me when I can just stay on the East Coast and just stay with my people, stay with it? No, no. I, it, to me, it was completely obvious, number one. Number two... Again, it was a, to me. It was embedded on the west, on the east side, that the nationals was the show to do for us. West Coast was the USA. That was embedded in my brain from day one. So that's my answer. All right. My my answer is I agree. Um, I would have went to the nationals because I, I mean, me personally, I was trained that you know, like a pit bull. You know, John Brown would say sick him, and I go in and bite and just go kill everything. But. As a my personal, I did the USA because I wanted to be in my backyard. I wanted to be the best because at that show, the national back then had you could every class could get a pro card. You know what I'm talking about? One out of every guy. At the USA, you had to win your class and the overall, which means you had to be the best of the best at the end of the day. When all the smoke cleared, I had to beat the bantamweight, the middleweight, the welterweight, heavyweight, and then at that time, the super heavyweights. And I did that. That was that was it was a personal. Uh, decision for me 
And I knew that, shoot, I was going to have some of them judges in my, you know what I'm talking about, like me too, been watching me since I was a kid. So I'm going to stay over here. So, yeah, I agree with King on that. <laughs> my, I'll give you my answer. My answer that I was a dumb, dumb, naive kid. <laughs> I was in school way too long. I knew nothing about politics, about trends, about East Coast, West Coast. I just figured if you showed up at your best, you got you, you placed where you're supposed to. So I did both. I figured, you know what? I'm always in shape. I could do two shows. It didn't take a lot out of me to peak twice a year. And so I did both. And I was naive to that fa fact, but they were right. Back in the early 90s, you know, I think there was definitely a trend for West Coast USA, East Coast wins nationals. I think it changed once we got into the 2000s. I think it kind of evened out. But there was definitely a there was definitely a tendency to, to go that direction. I think I'll add one X factor to that too. Chad Nichols, you know, yes, he, he guided me in the right. He put me on the right track when I didn't have when I had questions and I I should say Chad and Kim. I will put them both together because I used to talk to both of them. So it was him and he guided me in the right direction. He would tell me and he point blank told me stay stay to the Nationals, let Melvin do his thing. He's got it because we both because both Melvin and I guest posed at the Ronnie Coleman show. And, and Melvin was in shape, and I was a fat-ass off-season. <laughs> and I remember we had a little thing on stage, and I said, Melvin, go get your fucking pro card at the USA. Leave me alone, man. Let me do an analysis to get it out of here. <laughs> he laughed about and, that. Uh, and Melvin was laughing. Anyway, it was a fun time. But did Chad, definitely Chad put me on the right. And then even Chad, after I got my pro card, he point-blank told me, he goes, yeah, man, you ain't ready. <laughs> I, like, I want to compete. He goes, you're not ready for the pros. That's why I took two years to get, to get back on stage from 99 to 2001. He was straight. He told me, he goes, you're not ready for the pros. Just do what you got to do. Put on another 10, 12 pounds, and then we'll get you ready. Chad Nichols, God bless him. We lost Lee for a second. Um, I, I wanted to bring up something that Sergio mentioned, and uh, King, I'll go to you on this one. He mentioned specifically, he made a really good point. Let me see if I can get this correctly. There is a fine line between posing when you're under 275, uh, 270 pounds and over 270 pounds. Talking about Dennis Wolf um, winning the best posing award at the Arnolds. And, and again, we're talking about Sergio Oliva Jr. Because, you know, if we're going to go into classic physique, then that's a totally different topic altogether. Again, you're talking about a lighter uh, demographic for the most part. But when you're talking about somebody who's going to be posing over the you know weight of 270 pounds, talk about some of the challenges that's going to present. And Because he's talking specifically about how much more difficult it is for him to pull off some of these posing routines. Mm. Yeah, first of all, I don't think he's 200 and fucking 70 pounds on stage. That, that I severely doubt that. A lot of people <laughs> nowadays, they're saying they're 270, they're this. I think Flex Wheeler at his all-time best, I don't know if Melvin can clarify this for me, was a 232, 235? Yep. Somewhere around there. Right, and then uh, Cutler at his best was what, 255, 260? No, uh, two, no more than 262. So when someone says I'm 270 pounds, and let's let's take Ronnie and put him on a different category and put him aside. You know, let's not talk about it. he's just a freak mutation mutant, and we're never going to see that again for hundreds of years. But don't look at that now. Yes, if you're a bigger guy, of course it's going to be harder to move and all that stuff. But it's not impossible. How about practicing once in a while? How about you know getting in front of a mirror and and then putting the mic, put the earphones on and practice your posing? Nobody does that anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that anymore. It's just sad. <laughs> and, and, I, and again, I know Milos, is, he's, he's got so many clients and so many people still doing this. Is he, he's the person to ask this question, man. Milos will be the person mm -hmm. to ask. Yeah, you got to pose, definitely. Well, uh, let, let me tell you this, uh, uh, King. I talked to, uh, this is very interesting. I talked to Ronnie Coleman, asked him, what is your all-time best? Ronnie says, 98 Olympia. I asked Kevin uh what was his best uh, he said uh uh, uh hold a second shit I, I forgot now what was kevin uh i think uh, 93 another champions uh i asked uh, uh flex wheeler he says 99 um british grand prix and he said he was 258 at that show <laughs> and i remember that was because i was 255 that was my my heaviest and so is this possible yeah he looks bigger than me so yeah Flex would be competing normally, you know. He was 217, 18 at the 93, but uh, I don't classic. But then he went to the uh, 230s, and then uh, towards the end of career, he, he would tip the scale over uh, 250, possibly. But, you know, to go back to the, the posing, 
Kiritare uh, Magishi, you suppose, one hour a day as a mandatory. And uh, what I was saying, if you really analyze the posing, and I don't know if, can you do it, and uh, Dave, and Lee, or, or Melvin, uh, Melvin, I'm sure he does. Every pose has to be succeeding the other one. He has to, everything makes sense. I would take a picture of every single pose, and then put it on, and say, okay, here's 28 poses. Okay, this made sense, this sequence, but here, you turn around for no reason, you went down for no reason, you went down and up in a, you know, two consecutive uh, uh, places. So, the advice that I would give, you know, for, for the people, uh, you have to impress the judges. When you step on the stage, you have to do your best poses. Whatever, you know, your 10, 15 best poses, it has to be right there, because judges are gonna lose the patience. If you do like so-so pose, and it's not eventful, you drop the shoulders, you know, relax your uh, abs, nothing is happening. So you have to have a 10, 15 the best poses and transitions has to be perfect. It has to be, wow, wow, wow. You have to capture the audience, capture the judges. Not too many people do that. Uh, right now, even you know, when, when somebody sent me the posing video and I see like about 10 poses that have no place being there. I said, why the hell it? Oh, well, you know, he just thought of, it doesn't look good for you. It, Take it out, change it. it. It's like a movie, but, Milos. It's like a movie. Yeah. They say that a, a good director of a movie says there's not one scene in a movie that's not relevant to progress the plot forward. If there is, the movie drags, you lose the audience. Yeah. That, that, was, uh, that was what I was good at. That was what I've mastered. Mm -hmm. That takes time. That takes somebody showing you first how to do your mandatories. Yep. Most of the guys I see on stage right now, they don't even know how to do their mandatories. I yeah. said at a show just recently, me and Chris Cormier were sitting out there, and the guy got up there, and he was hitting his shots and big as hell, had a great physique, but he didn't know how to present it. That's like cooking a meal and then throw it on the floor. Don't give you a fork and say, eat it. <laughs> you, you can't do that. You have to know what you have. You have to know your greatest attributes. What are my best poses? And then you have to practice it over and over and over in front of a mirror. And the problem is, is that guys don't want to take that time to do that because it's boring. Yes. It takes time and it doesn't feel good. It's like walking naturally left, right, left, right, left, right. But see, posing's not like that. Posing is like walking front and side and front and to the left and front and to the right. It doesn't, you have to make what's uncomfortable natural. Right. How do you do that? It takes practice. So for you, for, for the question of a 275 pound guy or 255 pound guy hitting his shots, you first have to learn mind muscle control. Yeah. After you learn the mind muscle control, you have to know how to move from one pose to the next and do it perfectly or almost perfectly. Does it happen overnight? No, it doesn't. It took me years to do that. Once I got it, though, once you have it, it becomes second nature. Again, what Milo showed me about my stomach, I don't know why he, he, he messed me up with that because I, I, I don't even compete. I still do it when I'm driving <laughs> the car. I'm holding my stomach in. I'm like, I ain't competing no more. I still do it. <laughs> but it works. And when I'm on stage, mm -hmm. I always keep the attention of the judge. Yeah. Every time I move, something happens. Even when I'm standing to the sidelines, I don't relax and get water. And, you know, it was funny because it happened in uh, uh, one of my last shows that I won, the Phoenix Pro Show. Everybody was on stage. And I will say something about he, 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 uh, he day. I try to kill that guy in the gym. That dude has no give whatsoever. He is a robot. That guy doesn't get tired. So we were all on stage. And they kept having us battle and having us battle. It's one of those times when John Tooman got a hair up his butt and he wanted to keep us on stage for 20 minutes. So Tony Freeman got pissed and started cussing because he goes, you guys want water? I said, hell no, nah, man, I'll die up here, man. This is, this, this is where it's at, man, I'm here, let's go. He's like, you ain't the only motherfucker up here. You cussed at the judges? He was so mad, he cussed at the judges. You know what I'm talking about? And so that's what it takes. You got to be up there, ride or die. Guys don't have that mentality no more. You're going to have to kill me to get me off this stage. Milo should tell you, he ain't going nowhere to get no water. Wipe what? You bring the towel to me. I'm not going off this stage because if I go, I'm going to lose my money and I got to eat. I got rent to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I want to make this one comment about the weight of the body bowls. Uh, you know, when I first saw Kai compete, um, when he used to do team, well, I saw him as a kid because we used to compete in New York together. But when he was doing Team Universe and he was, na he was natural and he was winning, I think he weighed probably 220 pounds, 218 pounds. His movement on stage was incredible. He was Absolutely. unconventional. Okay. He didn't really, wasn't a good guy with the mandatories. 
but he was he he was like a ba- he was like almost like a ballet Broadway dancer on stage. It was it was so entertaining to watch. I didn't want it to, the routine to end. When he got bigger and he got over two fifty, he couldn't move like that anymore. He his routines were still very entertaining because you we see what he does. I mean, but he yeah. didn't move the same way. So I think when you do get larger and you weigh more, you do have to modify a little bit to the extent yes. of what you do. Right? Absolutely, you have to you have to pick your best poses. You got to prevent you know present them on stage. That's that's the key. You know the connection to the audience and the judges because judges are fans too. Don't let them tell it. Yes, they're supposed to be you know unbiased and all that but you they got their favorites don't don't think for one second that they are looking for a person to do a certain thing and that's just the way it is so you know posing is very important even if it's not you know you don't get the points for it even if you don't you know get the extra money because we had posing awards and all that when i was coming through me and king we we were trying to get that extra money that extra 10 grand we trying to get 15 money. 10 15 grand, 10, 10, 50, money, we try, we, hell yeah you know we what though? To get that money. Uh, you know i gotta say one thing too i remember watching lee priest routine lee took um a superman theme which was probably yeah. yes. over overused by a million people over the years and he made it exciting when i would see him at the olympia doing those poses to the superman with the victory poses I mean, I got chills in me. I mean, no one pulled off Superman better than Lee Priest. Nobody. Nobody. Right? He did oh, that. Thank you. He did that thank at the Arnold. Thank you. He <laughs> did that at the Arnold. Look, Lee did that at, at the Arnold. And, and, um, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we yeah, watched Lee, your video. Yeah. But, we yeah, Lee, Lee, Lee Priest did that at the, uh, at the uh, Arnold. And th- this was another 10 grand, right? And they, they said, we were talking to each other, and Lee, we, me and Lee talked briefly. And he he kept, he goes, hey, Bell, what you going to do? I'm like, I ain't telling you. He's like, well, what are you going to do, Bell? But I'm not telling you what you going to do. He goes, I'm not telling you. So I knew it was funny because Lee went out before I did, right? So, you know, it was a big thing. They had the TVs back there, you know. And and this is, again, this has been lost in body. But we all talk. We all, we all are homies, you know. But on that stage, we battled. So I ran to the TV. You know, Dexter's always getting stuff started, right? He's like, hey, <laughs> hey, you know, Lee's back there. So I ran to the TV. Man, when Lee came out and did that Superman, I looked at that. I was, I said, "Oh shit, I, I, I better do something because if I don't, they went crazy." <laughs> dun, 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 dun. They, I heard people yelling. I'm like, "Man, they, wait a minute, that's what, that's what, that's my wait a minute. You can't steal my funk. Hold on." I watched that routine and I got chills my damn self. So I knew I had to get it. And I think what the year did I do Darth Vader that year? Oh, I think did? I did Darth Vader because they said that was the year we were able to I use props. So, yeah. They let us use props, yeah, man, but yeah, Lee had everybody yeah. scared with that. I thought for sure that 10 grand was going to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Why don't they give that 10 grand out anymore? I mean, that, that really would inspire people to depose more, wouldn't you think? I was just going to ask that because, you know, last year with the Arnold Classic, you are talking to uh, Sergio before the Arnold, and you talked about the best poser award. He joked, laughed, said, it's going to be the easiest $10,000 I ever win. So, Lee, do you feel like that's something that needs to be incentivized more? Oh yeah, I think it would. It'd be good to give twenty five grand. Good to, I think it'd be good to bring twenty five. Why not? They should. I'm saying. Oh, I thought you said it was twenty five. No, up the money. <laughs> Melvin will come back, make a comeback for that money. Shoot, <laughs> for twenty five grand, you uh, think about that? I think should. Maybe, maybe you'd give them incentive. People, give people incentive to actual practice their posing again and stuff like that because. So even like Melvin said, it's not even the posing. Sometimes the posing's great, but even Labrada put up a video not long ago where he was showing the poses, but but he's also showing the transitions yes. between it. Yes. Yes. The, tra- the transitions are just as important as the posing because Labrada goes, here's a bicep, here's a lat spread. It's how you move between the two, and even just moving between the two is an art in itself. And sometimes I get sick of big guys saying, we can't pose because we're big, we can't pose because we're big. You can if you practice. Practice makes perfect, no matter how big you are. Plus, you I still remember mark. watching. I still remember watching Phil, Phil Hill do Phantom of the Opera at the Olympia. Oh. He went down into the splits. He had that crowd captivated. He's a guy, thick, muscular, huge legs like plaques and stuff, and he moved like a ballerina on stage. So with practice, you can make anything happen if you put the time and effort into it. Plus, Absolutely. you have to have a trademark. You got to have a trademark. That it's something that we all used to do. You know, when Melvin came out, you knew he was going to start slow and he's going to end up with the West Coast pop locking. You knew Melvin was going to do that. You knew Kamali is going to come out and I'm going to do a robot routine with the Terminator thing. You knew Lee's going to come out and do super. Milos, 
You knew somehow he'll put Gladiator in there. Somehow. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> some way in, in the music, somehow. somewhere in the routine, you would have fucking Gladiator in the fucking song. That's Milo right. Sarchev. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, that's it. You got to have the things. Victor with his one side, the bicep pose he does. You got to have your own specific thing that you do. I'm sorry, guys. You just don't have that anymore. It sucks, though. Yes. <laughs> Signature poses. Signature poses, I always love when I see something new. I don't know why people are not discovering new signature poses characteristic mm -hmm. just for them. But let, let me ask you now, because you guys maybe know. Supposedly, Sean Ray uh, competition somewhere in Texas that Kai Green had to go, take a train. He didn't have uh, money for a hotel room. He stayed uh, at a uh, uh, train station and then just went for a hope that he can get the uh, best poser award. And... He was uh, hoping he's going to be top 15 because if he didn't make a top 15, he wouldn't even pose. And I guess he was like a 15 and then he made a 10 grand. You know, do, do you know that story? Yeah. Yeah. That's I, true, I, right? I, yes. Okay. Yeah, I, go ahead. Okay, so 2007, and I'm, I'm sure, Dave, you remember New York. Yeah. Uh, Kai was sixth, but he looked. Unbelievable. If he would have uh, won that show, there would be no problem. Branch Warren won, Dennis James second, Dennis Wolf third, uh, and I trained both Dennis for that shows. But, uh, you know, I went backstage and said, uh, you know, Kai, you know, you should have won. I mean, he looked that good. Two weeks later, or three weeks later, in uh, Colorado, I saw him in a hotel, and then, you know, it's okay, sir, you know, you want to see what I look like? I said, of course, I would love to see what you look like. So he came into the room, and uh, hit the poses. Of course, the characteristic Kai poses, you know, like the twisted ass, <laughs> like, whoa, shit. And he, he looked great. But he had a notebook with him. And in this notebook, like Leonardo da Vinci, hyper realistic fucking graphic, every single pose, you can see every fiber correct, thing, everything. 30 poses back to back to back to back. I mean, uh, and I asked him, can you please take a picture? He didn't let me take a picture. I mean, Kai <laughs> you is loves everyone's notebooks. next level. <laughs> you yeah. love everyone's little notebooks. You want pictures of everyone's notebooks. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Kai, but, Kai, 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 something yeah. else. And speaking of this, let me use this. Uh, I predicted back in March that he's going to come back to the Olympia. Now, it looks like it's pretty much obvious thing that that's what's going to happen.